He's just Swingy, Swigzy. I like that. All right, all right, here we go. Yeah, Swigzy also is. He's not an Olimar player. He's an Alf player. Oh, okay. Cause just as goofy as he is. All right, so already just Swigzy kind of throwing stuff at him. Just you know, uh, Nick is a very knowledgeable player. He knows what each of the Pikmin do. He's yeah. he's very like he knows the nitty gritty of Smash Ultimate. Yeah. Olimar is definitely within that field. Yeah, Olimar is definitely one of the characters that you might not know what's going on if you don't actually like want to know. Like. You're just like, I'll, I play against this character, but I'm just going to do safe stuff and not actually know what things do. Like these, This is a very interesting matchup because these are, in a way, uh, both characters that could do a lot of things by, like, stance changing almost. Yeah. Like, you know, you got the three Pokemon that are very different. But, you know, each of the Pikmin in of themselves gives Olimar new options and a new play style to go about. So it's kind of like a mix and match almost. You know, maybe Nick will use certain Pokemon against certain Pikmin or vice versa. I feel like a lot of the... Uh uh, a lot of good this stuff that, that Swixie can do is uh, oh, that sneaky little vine loop. No, but I, I think uh, some of the scary stuff. Oh, is the F smash gonna take it. It's a very delayed up smash. Yeah. Definitely not ready for he, that. He had a he had a a big purple on deck to send that Charizard out of here. Good ledge trap from Noki. Yeah, I'd like to see like see if. There's a lot of aerial drift, like uh, when he throws a Pikmin on stage, like uh, not having that on his body for the for the recovery. He hasn't opted to go to ledge every time. Like he's actually gone on stage and swung out of disadvantage. It's that a very crap. generally like low lag move is down there, so it's uh it's not that bad of an option, honestly. So Swigzy holding on to these purples. Double purple setup is really strong. Especially because I get Squirtle, you know Squirtle wants to do like F tail grab stuff, or like a lot of like close combat stuff. Squirtle's not looking to like, like space you out. It's a purple, super valuable. I'm gonna take it though. Pikmin gets reset, so that double purple setup that we just talked about no longer yeah. there. Up smash out of field. That's not. Yeah, you know, he he can't like yeah he 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 like back aired and then tried to like jump there, and got caught up smash. Doesn't he know that Red Pikmin's not very effective? It's a water Pokemon. <laughs> Dude, I wish they were typing stuff like this. They had him in Brawl. I wish they brought it back. I think that would have been so cool. I, I want to say more about like the interactions of like how moves get slowed down, like going through Pikmin. Like like when he he he, he side beat as like a uh, uh, Swixie side beat as Nick was throwing back airs at ledge. I'm curious to see if any of the like extended hitbox actually cost him like because of the uh, time extension on the moves. Ooh, 100% yeah. I mean, Noku could also use that to his advantage, you know? Um, if he catches Swigzy neutral get up and he has a Pikmin on him, and he, like, let's say a uh, festival up airs, that could definitely extend the move long enough to where it could guarantee yeah. cover that neutral get up. He's like fishing for like, if you jump aerial here, I'm just gonna stand and uh, he's gonna take it. But this is a really scary situation. Obviously he's gonna be probably looking for the grabs here. Ooh, it's very... Uh -oh. Charizard with Ray is scary. This is definitely still like... Oh. Oh, Swigzy so whiffing that up smash. So he's got that blue, so now Nick's got to watch out for up throw. That's for sure. Yeah. I'm not sure if that'll kill quite just yet, because Charizard's pretty heavy, but it's definitely now. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Pikmin damage and the pummels. Yeah. He was cycling pretty heavily there. It was interesting to see that, like on his first cycle with the blue, he didn't immediately go for grab. He was he was willing to cycle a whole a whole time through. He's like one two three. I throw the I throw the side B. I throw an aerial, and now I'm back on blue. Yeah, very right smart. After. Trying to avoid that predictable play, as, especially because you know that like, as soon as you're at like 130, 140, like you know he's gonna be looking for the grab. Oh, yeah. You know the blue's on deck, so just automatically cycling it caught him unawares, and he was swinging, so he got side B. All of our moves have names. Like, <laughs> this move is weird with naming its moves. It's like characters feel... back airs have moves. They're just so stupid. Like, <laughs> it's like reversal swing or something. For <laughs> well, taking on battlefield, what do you think of the stage? Do you think this would offer any advantage to uh, Noku? I think that Olimar like doesn't actually deal that well from aerial approach. I think he can like anti air, but I don't. I think he has to eat the mix up. Like, other than anti airing, he has to hold the mix up. I don't think his aerials are particularly like good at like air to airing against Pokemon Trainer. Definitely like quick, and yeah. Decent, decently ranged Squirtle forward air. I think there's also, uh, I think, I feel like the main reason uh, Nick picked to the stage was because of the platforms. You know, he has an easier yeah. time weaving around Pikmin yeah. in and out of all of range. Absolutely. You can't, you can't as quickly throw the Pikmin to the platform because you gotta go through a jump squad animation, jump, or rise to the platform level. It gives him just a little bit more time to really react to those Pikmin and shield. 
So Nick's just keeping Swigzy on the corner. Yeah. Up be out of shield is actually like really, really good in this situation. Like he catches him like he like whiffs a uh he whiffs a side B or, or throws side B on shield and then get up be out of shield when he's like trying to approach or dash grab. Ooh, good get up attack. Also, I think another reason Noku picked the stage is the upper platform for Charizard up yep. as we just saw. Because you saw that last game, uh, one of Swiggy's stocks, I believe it was his first, Nick was having a lot of trouble getting it. Yeah. Swiggy was out like 140, 150 by the time he got it. Ooh, back air purple back air, very strong. Yeah. Double purple set up again. Let's see how Swiggy takes advantage of this. He was looking for the air dodge into down smash it. Ooh, that almost broke his shield. That is crazy. So Nick not having access to his shield for a little bit, out of fear it's gonna poke or break. Swiggy's so pretty firmly in control, still double setup, double purple setup. So he's just chilling back, throwing stuff at him, not really rushing anything, just playing the game. He's playing his game, and I think Noku is falling into that trap. Yeah. I actually think the Squirtle is kind of a mistake holding out the Squirtle as long as he does in the matchup. Like I know, like Squirtle is like the the low percent combo character. You you want to like that's your evasive character. But I think in this matchup you need like one the scary burst potential from Ivysaur or Charizard, and you need the ability to like play the range game. Hundred percent. Yeah, Ivy can definitely contest well with Razor Leaf. Yeah. Whereas Swigzy just has to ah uh, Swigzy can can kind of just hang out back and assume that. I'm going to take this space, and Squirtle has to find his way in. I'm just going to keep taking space until you run into stuff. Like, already, like, what you're talking about, Nick doing better as Ivysaur, is already doing much, much yeah. better as Ivysaur. Ooh, <laughs> the extension planks? on the... Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Oh, the Pikmin. Uh-oh. Okay, Swigzy makes it back to stage. Now he has the advantage. Let's see how he ledge traps Noku. Got that blue Pikmin. Not going to kill quite yet, I don't believe, on a stage like Battlefield, but... Good to note that he does have blue. I mean, that white like so much to grab here. If I haven't hear another whistle, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. Sour spot linger. Ooh, very, no very good two no frame. Tech. No, tech. no tech. All right, so Noku sticking the Squirtle. I don't. As you said. I, I think. I, mean, the, I think the Squirtle here is a mistake. It's also like you know, Swigzy has such high percent. You know, Squirtle is the one that can't kill, quote unquote. So. Yeah. It's why don't you stick to Charizard or Ivysaur? Because Squirtle is a character that can kill, but really specific moves, right? Yeah. Whereas Ivysaur and it's more importantly Charizard can kill just about anything. So the fact that he's like sticking to Squirtle is very yeah. questionable. It's uh, a lot of the Squirtle stuff is like put you in some sort of tremble situation and read like an air dodge in with like a down smash. Um, yeah, I think he took 69% for no reason there. And we saw how well he was doing his Ivy Sword just a stock or two ago. Already, like, Swigzy getting him to death percent. Swigzy, nice delay on not going to ledge yet because he knows that Nick wants to go uh, for that Ivy Sword Vine Whip, like the Sneaky Vine Whip. Swigzy's got to watch out for that Charizard up throw. Should be the stock. Yeah, that was good. He knew that he wanted the grab because he switched, he cycled the blue, so he spot dodged it and grabbed it in return. So now we have an exact situation similar to the end of game one. Charizard at about 130-ish, uh, Swigzy at zero, on fresh stock. But you know, like you said, Charizard the Rage is a very scary character. And as I say that, yeah, the set ends. No, it's it's still a very scary character because you you can you can absolutely die to like back throw back air and then stuff. Like back throw back air, you get ledge ledge shot. It's it's a it's a scary 